Sunday after Pentecost, our service is fully contained in your service bulletin that you have in your hands, or that you can find on our website, www.strichards.org. We continue our service with our opening hymn, We Are Marching to Zion, page one of your service bulletin. continues on page two with the opening acclamation. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and, and blessed be God's God kingdom, kingdom now and forever. And forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Glory, glory, glory to God in the highest. Glory, glory, and peace to God's people on earth. Glory, glory, glory to God in the highest. Glory, glory. And peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Glory, glory, glory to God in the highest. Glory. 
and peace to God's people on earth. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. Glory, glory, glory to God in the highest. Glory, glory, and peace to God's people on earth. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, you caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant us so to hear, hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Malachi. See, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be stubble. The day that comes shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who revere my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. has done marvelous things. With his right hand and his holy arm, has he won for himself the victory. The Lord will judge the world with righteousness. His righteousness has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He remembers his mercy and faithfulness to the house of Israel. And all the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. The Lord will judge the world with righteousness. Lift up your voice, rejoice and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp. With the harp and the voice of song. With trumpets and the sound of the Lord. Shout with joy before the King, the Lord. The Lord. 
and for to judge the world with righteousness. Let the sea make the noise and all that is in it, the lands and those who dwell therein. And let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord when he comes to judge the earth. In righteousness shall he judge the world and the peoples with equity. The Lord will judge the world with righteousness. A reading from 2 Thessalonians. Now we command you, beloved, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to keep away from believers who are living in idleness and are not according to the tradition that they received from us. For you yourselves know how to ought, you ought to imitate us. We were not idle when we were with you, and we did not eat anyone's bread without paying for it. But with toil and labor, we worked night and day, so that we might not burden any of you. This was not because we do not have that right, but in order to give you an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we gave you this command. Anyone unwilling to work should not eat. For we hear that some of you are living in idleness, mere busybodies, not doing any work. Now such persons we command and exhort in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. Brothers and sisters, do not be weary in doing what is right. Hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to God's people.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, Jesus said, As for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. They asked him, Teacher, when will this be, and what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And he said, Beware that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, and in various places, famines and plagues, and there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. For by your endurance, you will gain your souls. May I speak to you in the name of the God who creates, redeems, and sustains us. Amen. Amen. In all honesty, when I read the lessons for today, I almost decided to punt and just preach on the psalm. (laughs) The prophet Malachi warns of a day that is coming that will burn like an oven reducing the arrogant and the evildoers to stubble. The author of 2 Thessalonians, <clears throat> writing in the name of Paul, is focused on busybodies and spongers in the community, an epistle of resentment which sounds an awful lot like our culture wars today. And then there's Luke, who depicts Jesus as laying out a frightening scene of wars, natural disasters, and false teachers ready to mislead the faithful. And when his disciples ask him how they will survive all this, he's evasive. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. Now, what the heck does that mean? So you can see why it was tempting to blow off these visions of doom and gloom this morning and focus on the psalm with its exhortation to sing to the Lord a new song, thank you, for he has done marvelous things. But unlike some in our state state government, I believe that we do not get to avoid those things that make us uncomfortable. Indeed, it is often the things that are uncomfortable that we most need to consider. The first thing we need to know about the words from Luke's gospel today is that they aren't mere speculation. Luke's writing appear in two parts, his gospel and the Acts of the Apostles. Both were completed about 85 of the common era. That's a good 15 years after the temple has actually been destroyed. 
Thus, the words that Luke places in Jesus' mouth in this passage are not predictions, which we sometimes confuse with prophecies. They are actual historical accounts. <clears throat> Those who have visited the Temple Mount in Jerusalem have seen the enormous blocks of granite that once supported the second temple, which the Romans managed to topple from the Temple Mount, hurtling them hundreds of feet to the ground below. Before the Romans were through, not one stone would be left standing on another, just as Luke has Jesus saying. Concurrent with the destruction of the second temple, the Romans would force any Judean who survived their assault on the temple to permanently depart from Jerusalem. Eventually, all Judeans would be expelled from the land of Israel altogether, becoming what we have historically called wandering Jews in the hands of often hostile Christian majorities. <clears throat> With the loss of the temple, the center of Israel's religious life had been taken away. Now Israel's faithful must find a new way to continue their religion. It would have to change or die. And the response to that challenge would be seen in the rise of the synagogues under the direction of the rabbis. It would be there that the Torah would become central in determining how one lived one's life as a good Jew. In the tumultuous time in the wake of the temple's destruction, when Luke is writing, Judaism had begun a long period of redefining itself. Feeling threatened by the worldview of the Greco-Roman culture, Judaism began to define itself in opposition to any ideas it found to be contrary to life defined by the Torah as interpreted by the rabbis. The first step meant deciding which writings constituted Torah and which did not, a process that would take place over the next few decades. Now with the rise of a distinct population among the Jews who followed Jesus, contention arose in the synagogues. Before it was over, the Jesus followers would be expelled and the writings that they held sacred with names like gospels and epistles would be banned. Within a century of the fall of the temple in 70 of the Common Era, both rabbinical Judaism and a new religion called Christianity were well on their way to permanently separating from one another. To say it was not an amicable divorce is an understatement, as the many negative references to the Jews, the Jews, the Jews in the New Testament evidence. Now that's the context that Luke is writing in. When he speaks of the destruction of the temple, <clears throat> it is a fait accompli, the result of Roman impatience with the constant insurrections of the Jewish zealots. When he speaks of famines and plagues, such, as, such are common in places where societies have been destabilized by war and insurrection. Everything from food supply to health systems are thrown into jeopardy. And when Luke speaks of betrayals, even within one's own families and persecutions, it is because that's what's actually happening in the shredded social fabric of the Jewish population of Palestine at the end of the first century. It was a grim time indeed. So why do we need to hear all of this? Haven't we got enough problems of our own? Do we not have wars that have disrupted our world's economy, including its food supplies and the abilities of people to heat their homes? Do we not have insurrections that threaten to topple our very way of governing ourselves? Was not our temple of democracy sacked and desecrated by rioters? Do we not have vulnerable people who worry every day that they may be betrayed by those they thought they could trust when it comes to their gender identity and decisions regarding their reproduction? And do we not have desperate refugees coming to our shores every day praying for compassion and a new beginning only to be persecuted by those with power over their lives? In truth, 
I think we understand the world that produced Luke's gospel only too well. And it is precisely because we do understand it that hearing this gospel reading today is essential. So, what good news can we take away from these dire readings this morning? First, like the people of first century Judea, we must acknowledge that we live in a time of transition. All things change. And for change to occur, old established ways of being and understanding, some of them deeply cherished, must die before the new can be born. That is happening now. And for many of us, it is painful. Rather than deny our pain and rage at the agents of change, a healthy people will allow themselves to mourn as we let go of that which is dying, even as we learn to adapt to that which is being born. Now that last part is important. Something new is being born, and that should give us hope and a sense of expectation. Had we used the alternative elections appointed for this day, we would have heard the prophet Isaiah saying, I'm about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. Change is perhaps the only constant in human existence. But God is with us in all things. And that alone can empower us to embrace the transitions we face with humility, candor, and courage. Second, it is essential to note that the Gospel of Luke comes to us from a community which preserved it first as an oral tradition and later reduced it to writing. The key word in that statement is community. With all the loss that occurs in times of major change, human beings need safe places to honestly and openly acknowledge their suffering. And the role of community support in surviving times that try men's soul, to quote Thomas Paine, is absolutely vital to survival and healing. But that community does not just happen. It requires all of its members constantly agreeing to be fully present, working through disagreement and bearing one another's burdens. We are fortunate to be members of a healthy community. Every day, I give thanks for this community we call St. Richard's. It is a gift from God. Finally, let us take very seriously these words that Luke places in the mouth of Jesus in this gospel reading. At the very end of the lesson, <clears throat> Jesus tells his listeners, by your endurance, you will gain your souls. And here's the thing. They did endure. How do we know? Because 2,000 years later, we are reading the gospel their community produced this morning. Luke's community of Jesus' followers endured. And we will too. So in this sometimes frightening time of major change in our world and in our lives, may we be courageous enough to face our fears and voice our suffering. May we work to be a community where it is safe to do so and supportive of each other in our struggles. And may we resolve to endure these trying times, trusting the God who is always with us through all that may come. I close this morning with one of the many beautiful collects in our prayer book. And this one is designed to be a prayer in times of conflict. So let us pray. O oh God, you have bound us together in a common life. Help us in the midst of our struggles to confront one another without hatred or bitterness and to work together with mutual forbearance and respect through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now let us stand together and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed on page 8 of your service bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are next on page 9. Recognizing that our gifts are miracles that enable our ministry, serve our neighbors, and strengthen our community, we gather to offer our intentions, petitions, and thanksgivings to God. I ask your prayers for the church, the inspiration and inheritance of our gifts of wealth, works, and wisdom. Pray for all bishops and other ministers. When we give out of our abundance, there is always more than enough. I ask your prayers for the world, your greatest miracle. May we who inherit this earth be wise stewards of creation and kind caregivers of all your creatures. I ask your prayer for those who lead our nations, for our legislative and judicial institutions, and for the representatives of our local government. May they use the plentiful resources they steward to care for the people of the world. When we give out of our abundance, there is always more than enough. I ask your prayers for our neighbors and all who need or request our prayers. For those who are marginalized and oppressed, for those who are sick and dying, for the lonely and isolated, for those who are suffering, and for those who sleep in our streets. We pray for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. We pray for Jackie, Ray, Bill, Ruth, Kathy F., Alice, Bob B., Simone, Sasha, Johanna, Gina, Betsy, Sandra B, Betty, Stephanie, Dick, Priscilla, Linda, Pat, Val, Meredith, Hazel, and Stan. And family and friends, Vicki, Jan Beck, June, Diana, John, Cindy W, Lucy and family, Jim and family, Sarah, Rachel, and Emily. When we give out of our abundance, there is always more than enough. I ask your prayers for those who have died, especially Jenny Edwards. May they forever gather at your table of plenty, sharing their gifts with love and joy. <clears throat> We remember the members of our legacy society whose gifts, bequeaths, and intentions provide inspiration and abundance beyond their lifetimes. When we give out of our abundance, there is always more than enough. As the crowd gathered to hear Jesus preach and shared two fish and five loaves, they discovered that their gifts were blessed. They increased and became a blessing to others. We give thanks for the uncountable miracles and blessings in our lives. We give thanks for the marriage of Bobby and Dustin McCullough Stacy. When we give out of our abundance, there is always more than enough. May we too 
reach within ourselves to share our gifts with the world so that our love overflows in a need-filled world. These and all things we ask in the name of your Son. Amen. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand if you're not. I know that the stand thing is uh, kneeling or standing with our special prayers. Peace of the Lord be always with you. I'll tell you what's going on at St. Richard's Episcopal Church. We are a church on a mission. We are here to discover God's grace, change our lives, and change the whole world. We do that in very many ways. We do that by uh, creating opportunities for fellowship. So this Wednesday, November 16th, we are having our family potluck. That's uh, in the parish hall. It's, it's an exciting potluck because half the parish hall is being used for our martial arts school, and half the parish hall is being used for our family potluck. So it's, uh, it's, it's a little loud, but it, and it's a little exciting. I know, we do both. We do both. We have these divider things. And it's, it's, it's very exciting. Sometimes they use, like, big weapons and stuff. Uh, so we're like, whoa. But it's, it's cool. It's cool. So you come on out to family potluck, 6 p.m. Thanksgiving Day, we have a 10.30 a.m. service here in the church, and immediately following that service, we will have... Uh, Blessedly easy Thanksgiving dinner. If you don't have anywhere to go to Thanksgiving, now you do. At the Red Booth after church, sign up. It's, uh, we're going to charge you 15 bucks and bring in food, and everybody's going to have Thanksgiving Day to, together here in our parish hall. We started it last year, and it was a great success. So come on out, uh, sign up, make sure we have enough food for you. Sydney Ogilvie will be at the Red Booth, I think. Sydney going to be at the Red Booth or somebody else got it? That's okay. Somebody will be at the Red Booth to sign you up for Thanksgiving dinner. You can always call the parish office if you uh, want to sign up for that. December 4th is a big day. We have our holiday brunch. Heather Kirby. Hi, Heather. She's going to sign you up to help her put on our holiday parish-wide brunch right after the 1030 service on December 4th. Uh, 12, about 12 o'clock in the parish hall. Exciting things are, are going to be happening there, so uh, I'm not, we're not going to give it away yet, but exciting things are happening. So come on out for our December 4th brunch and help us out. That same day, December 4th, first Sunday of December at the 5 p.m. service, we'll have our blue Christmas service, a service of remembrance. Thanksgiving will have happened and Christmas is coming up if it's a tough year for you because you've lost People uh, recently or a even a long, long time ago, it's a lovely service. Uh, so I encourage you to come out and bring, uh, this is a, another great opportunity for you to invite somebody who might have experienced a loss of a loved one this year. Come to the Blue Christmas service. It's very comforting. We don't have a Eucharist that day, so it's not like, oh, do I do that? Would it, you, know, you can invite your friends and just uh, be uh, together in the pew. It's a great, it's a great service. We are midway through our pledge drive campaign, more than enough. This is, your, this is a pledge card. If you haven't made your pledge, please do. We have about half of the pledges we expect in, about 54 pledges in. We usually get just over 100 pledges. We'd like 110. We'd like 150. We'd like 200 pledges. But, uh, so the pledge cards are in the back of the uh, church for you. You can ask David Kellogg for one if you haven't received one. David's right there. Hi, David. There's David. He will make sure you get a pledge card. 
And we have the third of our four pledge drive speakers today. Oh, I love this. So I'm loving introducing Andrea Williams. She's our violin teacher here at St. Richard's. So here's just a, a few bullet points of her, her life, starting very early. I love these. She had her solo orchestra debut at age eight with the Fort Wayne Philharmonic. Her first European tour was when she was 12, and she played for Pope John Paul II at the Vatican. That's cool. Come on, that's cool. It gets cooler, though. She performed on stage with Bob Hope. She's like, Does, are they going to remember who Bob Hope is? I'm like, yeah, they'll remember. <laughs> they'll remember. She played at the Kremlin in Moscow. And uh, locally, my favorite one's the last one. She's been a member of the Orlando Philharmonic and the Bach Festival Orchestra here in Orlando, but she also played with Aerosmith for the premiere of the movie Armageddon. What a perfect, perfect last bullet point for our gospel today. I know, it's perfect. So Andrea, come on up. She's going to speak from there, and then we'll introduce you to two of her students. That's where you go. I asked her, how would anybody hear what I have to say? I was recently asked how I came here to be teaching my violin lessons at St. Richard's by one of your congregation members. And I'll try not to be emotional, but it's a bittersweet story how I ended up here meeting Allison and being with you today. For 15 years, I taught violin lessons at the Aloma Church on 436 in Aloma. Exactly. The big, beautiful white church where people got their Christmas trees, got their pumpkins, after school programs, preschools. Two weeks, they gave me a two week notice. I got an email and it said, um, so sorry, we won't be able to be having lessons here any longer. I thought, oh, okay. They're expanding the preschool. Maybe they're putting in a food pantry something, growth. It turned out the church had been sold with no notice, property sold, and they were, they were gonna tear down the church. That church is demolished, it's gone, and there are now apartments there. Broken heart for me, but a bigger broken heart for the community because our churches are going, they're gone. Ah, the motion set. I collected myself. I called um, St. Richard's here. My daughter attended here when she was a little girl, the preschool program. And they got me in touch with Allison. And Allison said, come on over. I said, well, what, what do you mean, come, mean to, and she's like, no, like today, come on over. I said, well, in my violin teacher way, very particular. I said, well, I'm not sure which days, how many students, come on over, we'll figure it out together. Well, I thought, well, I'm in the right place. Because she opened her arms, she took her time, she didn't know me from Adam, except that I was a violin teacher. We're usually pretty easy, you know, <laughs> pretty capable people. But she opened the church to me and said, come on over, we're going to figure this out together. And that's what you have done. I can't thank you enough as a congregation for finding a place for me to teach here, being welcoming to my students, and just giving them a place to learn and making this a real community. That being said, I asked two students that have just started lessons here at the church. I teach once, so they come once a week and work with me. Girls, you want to come up? Come on. Elizabeth and Lauren Brick. So they're going to come up, and this is their first time playing in public. And I thought, how appropriate that they play in your sanctuary at our church here. And they can go wherever they want. <laughs> so this is their first time playing in public, and they are going to play two things you all will recognize. We're going to be a major in one No pressure of herself.
see happening at St. Richard's. That's what you support. This is the learning that uh, uh, Larry Cruz, our martial arts school owner, talked about with, his, with the students that he teaches. This is what we do here at St. Richard's, and your gift to our Pledge Drive campaign uh, keeps the doors open so that we can indeed say to everybody, come on in, we're going to figure this out. And even through the flood, she was in one of the classrooms, now she's in the nursery, and we just flip it and flop it, and, and we make space for everyone because there's more than enough. Thank you, Lauren and Elizabeth. Thank you so much, Andrea. It's our honor to have you here today. Who's having a birthday? What day is your birthday? I should memorize this at this point. What day is your birthday? Tuesday, 15th. Tuesday, November 15th. What day is your birthday? Tomorrow the 14th, Simone says. <laughs> You having any big birthdays? A five? What five birthday is this for you? Fifty-five! Are you having a five? You're having a, a, a five-four? And Steve is fifty-four! All right, good people of God, on page 830, which prayer would you like? Oh God, or watch over? Watch over your child. Page 830, prayer number 51. Let us pray together. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase, increase them. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall, and in their hearts may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday! How about anniversaries? Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, 
in your service bulletin on page 11. continues on page 12 of your service bulletin with Eucharistic Prayer B. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give God, God thanks and praise. and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection open to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever magnify your holy name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy. kneel as you wish. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and he said, Drink this, all of you. 
This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with St. Richard and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. This is the true bread which comes down from heaven. Who eats this bread shall live forever. This is the true bread which comes down from heaven. Who eats this bread shall live forever. These are the gifts of God, and you are the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. At this point, um, we are continuing to offer communion in three different ways. You're welcome to come to the rail, and I will come around and put a wafer in your hand. You can eat the wafer and wait for Harry Coverston to uh, come by with the drinking chalice. Or you can hold the wafer in your hand and wait for Art and Carol to come by with the intinction chalice. Or you can stay in your pew and wait for me, wait for me, wait for me. The ushers will tell me if you'd like one of our handy-dandy communion sets, which um, I'll get to you as soon as I can get out get out to you, okay? Got it. Please be seated. Oh! 
love a lyric that says, my spirit pants for thee, O living word. <laughs> Can't skip it. On page 18, you'll find our post-communion prayer at the top of the page. Standing or kneeling as you wish, let us pray and give thanks together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his, save, and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is a fun one, God Be With You. It's on page 19 and 20 of your service bulletin. Please stand.